All right, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about taking your drone abroad with you, taking it through the airport, past airport security, taking it to foreign countries, breaking it down into three key areas about what you need to do if you're planning on taking your drone abroad with you this summer. So a question I get asked a lot is about how I take my drones into different countries. And you might be thinking of doing the same, and it's about planning and preparing and then hopefully you won't have any issues. If you don't and you literally just rock up at the airport and hope for the best, that's where these problems occur. And some countries have their own restrictions you need to be made aware about before you even get to that country and even start to even think about flying your drone. So for instance, in China, you need insurance to fly your drone, no matter the weight of the drone. In Italy, you cannot fly at night. In Spain, you need to register before you go. In the USA, if you're gonna be flying at night, you need anti-collision lights. And Australia, you need to register. That's just a few. So the simplest way of doing it to check, just first of all, is to go and type in on Google where you're going to. So just type in bringing my drone into France, bringing my drone into USA, bringing my drone into Canada. And normally the top result there will tell you about what you need to do, whether you need to register or not. And this is where it gets a bit tricky. And there seems to be a golden number with the restrictions about the drone you can bring in. From the research I have done, from the experience I have had, it's all about the weight of the drone. So anything that's over 500 grams, countries seem to have a bit of a problem with. So if you want to bring in, say, the DJI Mavic 3, which weighs over 500 grams, or the DJI Air series, like the DJI Air 2 or the DJI Air 2S, the DJI FPV drone, these can all be brought into countries, but a lot more work is gonna be needed from you. For instance, Turkey, any drone over 500 grams can't be brought into that country. It will be seized at the airport without permission. That permission has to be filled in via a form. And you need to be a Turkish resident to do that, which makes no sense really at all. So then you need to then go and get another form, fill that in. You need to get permission from your country that's gonna basically outline you have no convictions and you're a good flyer, all this. Send that over and then they will then give you permission or not to fly. And other countries around the world, if it's over 500 grams, majority of them either just don't allow it or you have to register or seek permission from their country's aviation to actually say, yes, you can use it. It's a lot of hassle. Whereas the golden number is now under that 500 gram limit. So if you've got one of these, like a mini series, the mini two, the mini, the mini SE, the mini three, even the DJI Spark, which is under 500 grams, these seem to be a lot more lenient. And you, most you don't even need to register. It all depends on the country, but they, they seem a lot more relaxed. Okay, so we now we've done all the requirements about where you're going, you've checked, you've researched that. Now, what about the plane, getting past security? Going to the airport is an exciting place, but it is quite stressful going through security. And taking a drone only adds to that pressure and stress, doesn't it? So I always take this bag with me when I go abroad or on any trips. This is the PDI Tech One Mo bag. This has million one pockets on here but everything can be placed and accessed really easily through all these side pockets. So I've got it all sealed and ready to go before I get to the airport. I really highly recommend you picking up one of these, these LiPo bags. Some airlines actually require you to have one of these to store the batteries inside of it. They only cost about 10 pounds. I use these all the time. Never had an issue at all when I've used the LiPo bags. If I turn up at security and I've got my drone batteries in the drone and I'm just pointing it out all over the place, that's when security can get a bit like, mm, don't be that person and I've seen it all the time. When you get to security, get to that line, you go to open it and then your, your equipment is literally spread out all over the place in different carry-on bags, different areas and you're like trying to faff around finding it. You're just gonna piss that security staff off instantly. You're then gonna leave stuff in your bag so you don't know where it is, you're gonna get bag checks. It's a bloody nightmare. So make sure you know where everything is and then it's you sail through. It's a stressful environment and make it less stressful by planning before you even get to that area. Now bringing batteries on board a plane, it's all about safety of it and actually being responsible. So don't bring a million one batteries if you don't need to. But a lot of airlines seem to have a maximum capacity about how many batteries you can bring or the maximum 
you know, watt hours of that battery. So check your airline again before you get there. Majority of airlines, it seems to be a magic number of 100 watt hours is the maximum capacity you can bring on board. So for instance, a DJI Mavic 3 battery is 77 watt hours. So that airline might say, I can only bring one of these because I can't go over that limit of 100 watt hours. Or they might say I can bring this but only one other because it's still under that 100 watt hours limit. Whereas if I wanted to bring the DJI Mini 3 battery, this is 18 watt hours, so well under. So I could bring three of these without any problems at all. So go and check the actual limits of your airline. Again, a quick Google search will do that, but majority of them, it's 100 watt hours. Now, some airlines as well require your batteries to actually be discharged before going on board, normally 50% or less, and they might require you to show them, say, the battery battery percentage level on the drone or in here when you get to security. So again, just to prevent any problems, maybe it's worthwhile to do that. Um, but if you need to discharge this pretty fast and you have the charging hub, if you were to put the battery inside the charging hub here, you'll see that these batteries are fully charged. So if I was going abroad the next couple of days, these might not discharge fast enough. But because this has an in and an out port on the back, if I was to connect something into this, say my phone or like an iPad, and I use this to charge my phone like now, then this is then gonna draw the power from these batteries. So these will discharge really fast because it's drawing that. You don't need to worry at all about the airport security. As long as you prepare beforehand, you have everything in place, you're polite with the security staff. I've never had a problem with them at all. Make sure you have these LiPo bags for putting your batteries inside here. The security staff really appreciate it and it just shows that professionalism that you know what you're talking about. Put these in your carry-on bag, put them on the train when you're going through security and you'll go through. Now I am also aware and ready if my bag gets checked. I might be taking a big camera, I might take my two action cameras, drones, batteries. You know, it's a lot of equipment, isn't it? So be prepared to get stopped. But if you get stopped, just say, yeah, I'm going abroad for, for leisure. I'm taking my drone with me for some photography. I've done the requirements. I've got my LiPo bags. Just show them and explain to them that you know what you're on about. And I've never had a problem. And most of the time, the security staff are quite interested. Going, oh, God, that's cool. Is that the latest DJI drone? You know, they're interested. So don't be a dick with them and they'll be fine with you. And then the last tip to make your overall flight experience more enjoyable when you get to that country. So you've done your preparations about going to that country, you've sailed through security, you've just got to that location, and then you find that you don't have a phone signal, and then your drone is geolocked. And then you're like... Oh. So where you're going on holiday, you might already know about an idea of where you want to go and fly. You might have seen this location on TV, on YouTube, and you want to go and fly there yourself. But you might find when you get there, your drone is locked, it's geo-locked. It might be no fly zones, it might be control zones, warning zones, altitude zones. So to check this, there are two main websites I use a lot. A quick talk about this now. One is dronesafetymap.com and the other one is the DJI FlySafe website. If we look at the DJI FlySafe website here and we're just going to type in Ibiza, this will show you a map of Ibiza and the restriction zones about this, this, basically this country. You'll see here near the airport there are three obvious restriction zones. One outside of the airport is an authorization zone. Another one which is the approach is an altitude zone and the actual airport itself is like the restriction zone, the no-fly zone. So don't even go near that. But you might find that the authorization zone is you can see here and we'll look we'll switch over to the drone safety map it is a really large area isn't it so if you're say right on the right hand side here quite a good distance away can you fly there well yes you can so the issue you'll find though is signal so your phone's signal abroad might not be very good and we know now on this, on the RC, it doesn't have any built-in 3G, 4G at all. So it relies on you using your phone to get a signal. Now, why is this important? Well, if you get to this area and you go on to the DJI map again, you'll see that authorization zone. So you can unlock that if you have an account with DJI. So you can go onto this website before you even get to that area and then you can actually put in the dates you want to fly, and it normally gives you about a 48 hour window. Put in the, uh, where you're going, put in the date, put in the reason why you're flying there. It will then link your account you've already got, 
and then it will give you a yes or no. And normally it authorizes it pretty quick. If it needs to do more checks, it might ask you, but generally I found it unlocks it straight away. Now you can do this when you get to the country and you go and take off, you'll get a box on the screen saying you're in, in a, a warning zone. Do you wish to unlock it? But you can't unlock it unless you have a signal. And in a lot of countries, if you're say in the mountains or somewhere, you're not gonna have one. So then you are grounded. And another tip, you don't have to, but I really recommend it, is when you're in these areas, if you're in a warning zone, just go beforehand and look about the air traffic control details. DroneSafety.com normally gives you the ATC phone numbers for that area. Just give him a bell and just say, hey, I'm a drone pilot. I've just got a Mini 3 Pro. I'm gonna be flying in this location where you are for the next however long you're gonna be flying. And they really do appreciate this. They want to know the more knowledge and facts about the airspace, the better. So they know who's flying in that airspace. It's fantastic. They would rather know every single time than not know. So I hope that really helps and the people asking me about going abroad. It's generally planning and preparing where you're going. I would just take the Mini 3 just to avoid a lot of hurdles. It's going to be good enough and it's a great travel drone. It's the drone I take with me now for travel. The Mavic 3, not so much because it's just it's just more hassle going abroad with that drone. So do that. Get yourself some, some LiPo bags like this have everything packed ready and you will sail through. And if you are going away in the next few weeks, have a fantastic time. I hope you found that helpful. Like and subscribe if you're new around here and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.